everybody, this is Justin again at Songbirds Music Art and Dance Center. I hope you guys are doing well, and if you've decided to embark upon this Build Your Own Guitar From Scratch project, I hope that it is also going well and that you're having a good time with it and learning a lot. Uh, we're about to do our third step of the process today, which is all about sanding. So before now, we should have, in the first step, cut out our guitar body blank and made sure that it was flat, ready to go. Our second step was uh, routing, so carving out the side of the guitar and making the whole block shaped like a guitar, as well as rounding the edges, making it uh, feel like a guitar body. And now our third step is just doing the final process of sanding to get it ready for the finishing, which is where you apply your stain or your uh, wood oil or your paints or whatever you're going to do to uh, make your guitar look and feel exactly how you want it at the end. Uh, a note about sanding here before we start is that wood dust is uh, known to cause cancer and it is dangerous, so make sure that you are sanding in a well-ventilated area. I would highly recommend that you have a respirator or something to put over your face if you're doing this uh, inside your garage. Please do not sand inside your home. I've made this mistake several times. It will never end well. The dust will never be contained. So sand outside or sand in your garage. If you are inside a shop or a garage like I am, um, definitely wear your respirator. Uh, Jillian was nice enough and she got me this crazy heavy duty uh, gas mask for this project um, and I cannot say enough good things about it. Uh, this is just awesome and it really helps me feel uh, safer and cleaner. Uh, before when I used to sand things, I would always be careful about you know having some ventilation but I would still end up blowing my nose afterwards and there'd be a little bit of dust that comes out. This totally prevents that. So if you have the extra funds or you have access to a gas mask or a full face respirator, definitely go for it because you only get one pair of lungs and it's not worth the hassle of damaging them, right? So protect yourself first uh, because over time, wood dust will uh, hurt you and it can be dangerous. That being said, let's go ahead and talk about how to get this guitar body ready. So I still have um, my orbital, random orbital sander or a power sander here. We should have already gone through the hard sanding process when you did your contouring on the body. We just talked about that last time. That's where you're carving out the shape around like, you know, where it sits against your waist or where your arm rests on it. If you chose not to do that, you're going to want to go ahead and put 80 grit uh, sandpaper on your orbital sander or use 80 grit sandpaper by hand. If you don't know, sandpaper has different numbers that designate how rough it is. The lower the number, like 80, means it's more rough and it's a very aggressive texture. We want to start off with low numbers and then gradually build up to higher numbers. The way that works is that sandpaper is just a very abrasive material that scratches your surface and removes big imperfections. We can't go from a big number like 80 all the way to a fine number like 400 because the grit of the 400 won't be enough to remove the scratches from 80. That's why we have to step up incrementally. So you'll see in this video that we're going to be doing like 80 and then going to 120 and then stepping up slowly to get the smoothest possible finish. That is because when we use our finish on the actual guitar, for example, like our high gloss um, polyurethane or something that gives us that mirror finish, any imperfection that we have in the guitar body will be magnified in the finish. If you ever look at like a mirror or glass or even water in sunlight or the glare, you can see anything that's wrong with it. You know, you can see any particles floating on the surface or stuck to it. And that's true for this as well. So if there's any scratches left over, we have to get rid of them now so that our finish looks as perfect as possible. So we take our 80 grit sandpaper and we're gonna go over the whole body, front and back. This guitar body has been finished with the sanding process and it's ready for the finishing step. So I'm gonna demonstrate on this one. We just take our sander, we go over the front and the back or your hand sandpaper. Remember that if you are sanding by hand, you want to go with the grain. That means that you're following the grain lines and doing that motion with your sandpaper. Never sand against the grain because that will leave gouges that are annoying to get out. So always go with the grain. And never use your orbital sander on the edges, especially up here on the horns because it will take off too much material. Use the edges and the horns with your hand sandpaper so that you can go slowly. It goes without saying, but anytime that you're sanding, you can never put it back. So make sure that you are sanding a little bit and then stopping to examine your work. Use your eyes to look at how it looks and see if there's any scratches left over, and also use your hands to feel. That's a very important step because with all the dust and with um, you know the repetitions looking at it, your eyes get tired. You want to use your hands to feel for scratches. Actually, I just found something here I need to go back over to make sure I, I get rid of that before I do the finishing process. Your hands are gonna be more accurate in figuring out what you need to fix than your eyes are. Anyway, so we've gone over the whole body and the edges with 80. 
We are then going to step it up to 120 grit for the same process. Use your power sander if you have it on my friends in the back, and then use your hand sandpaper to go around the edges and the horns, etc. We will then do the same exact process with 220 grits. This is uh, getting to be very fine, so it should feel really nice and smooth to the touch afterwards. At this point, when you've done the 220 grit and you're happy with it, take a damp paper towel or even like, you know, like a microfiber rag and you're going to wipe off the whole guitar to clear the dust off of it. Do a nice close examination to see if there's any more damage that needs to be corrected or any scratches that you can see or feel. When you're happy with it, we then want to look for any big irreparable damages from the routing process or the cutting process. So maybe you've got a stray saw blade mark or maybe the router actually had a tear out or something happened that the sanding cannot fix. That is what we use wood putty for. So I have two different kinds of wood putty here. I have what I call the good stuff, which is the plastic wood in the small containers. And this is the stuff that smells like nail polish. It's got like acetone in it and it's kind of a, it's very strong. This is very structurally strong too. So if there's any problem or crack with the guitar, this is what you use it for. So you would make sure you get your putty up, put it on the guitar, it dries very quickly, sand it down, and make sure that the area that you fixed is also as smooth as the surrounding area. Right? So if we've already built up the 220, make sure that area is also sanded with 220 as you step up to it. After that is done, then we're going to give our guitar a bath in the simple wood putty. So here's a tub of this plastic wood. This is not the acetone-based stuff, this is like water-based. So it's very easy on your hands. You can just dip your fingers in and go. What we're gonna do here is we're going to do um, like kind of like a simple grain fill. So obviously wood is an organic material and it has pores. We want to close up those pores so that when we put apply the finish, you're not gonna see any bumps or anything in it from the natural shape of the wood. It will be glassy and smooth. This is an important step. I would not recommend skipping it. So take your wood, uh, your wood filler and you're going to mix it a little bit with water. Not a ton, you're kind of going for this like soupy, like Wendy's frosty texture where it's a little bit firm, a little bit soft. And you're going to just rub it over every surface of your guitar. Do it in steps so that you can do the top part and then the sides, let it dry overnight, and then flip it over and do the back. You can see on this guitar, I have covered the front here. It looks uh, all very beige because the, uh, the wood putty has covered all the grain markings and the back I've actually gone ahead and sanded. So this back is almost ready for the uh, sanding process to be finished. And on the front here, I've got the paste on top of it. Once the entire guitar body has been covered in the paste mixture and it's dry, you will then resume the sanding process. So we stopped at 220 grit. So we're gonna do that again to get rid of the, uh, the putty. So apply your 220 grit sandpaper all over the guitar. And I know it kind of seems like we're stepping backwards, but remember this is only to fill the grain pores. So we sand that down and make sure that any visible wood putty has been removed. You shouldn't really be able to see the fact that the wood putty was there if you've matched your color right with the wood you're using, but you will feel a huge difference. It will feel much more smooth, especially if you're using a harder wood like oak or something that has a big open grain pattern. After that is done and you're happy with how it feels and looks, we're going to step it up to 320 grit sandpaper. Like we said before, on the front and the back with a power sander or a hand sander, doesn't matter, and then the edges with your hand sandpaper. After that, the last step is optional, but I do like to do one more sanding at 400 grit. The difference between 320 and 400 is debatable, especially on wood, but I like to go the extra step and make sure it's as smooth as possible before we do the finishing process. So the whole thing in 400, and then let it sit. So, you know, you sand this guitar, leave it in your shop or wherever you're working on it, literally overnight, you know, go do something else, take a break, and then come back to it, clean it off, and examine it to see if you have any more imperfections. Like I said before, we can't go back after this step, so make sure you're absolutely happy before we move on to the finishing process. That being said, it's important to know that whatever you're working with, whether it's a shop or your house or your backyard, you do not own a guitar factory, right? So you are fighting perfection, right? Just know and understand that no matter what, the sanding process will never be finished. It'll only be abandoned because we will never be able to attain the perfection of a guitar factory with what we have here. I'm very happy with how this one turned out. I think it's very smooth and it's ready for the last step. And that's the step you wanna be at. You should be proud of where it is, happy with it, excited to move on. Don't be driven crazy by the tiny imperfections because there will always be some. You have to make peace with perfection 
and move on when you're happy with it. After you've found that happy spot and maybe you've had a friend or family member examine it too to see if there's anything you've missed, you're just going to clean it off very well. So go ahead and take your microfiber rag or a damp cloth, clean off the guitar, take a shot vac or some kind of vacuum and carefully clean out the cavities, make sure there's no dust anywhere, and then set it aside in a safe, clean, dry place for the next step. And then we're ready. That should be all for the sanding process. The biggest things are, remember, please protect yourself and your lungs. Use some kind of respirator and then go slowly. Remember that you cannot uh, put back anything you've sanded. So make sure you're going nice and slowly, using your hands to feel for the textures that you want. And then lastly, make peace with perfection and have someone else examine your work before you move on to the last step. That's all. We will see you next time for the final process, which is going to be our painting and our staining and our finishing. And then after that, we'll do a bonus lesson on how to assemble your electric guitar body. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.